Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch the Fire Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do a brand introduction video alongside an in-depth sniff candle review of a trio of scents from the new to me, though not new, candle company, PF Candle Company. I actually discovered them through, I believe, an Instagram ad, as well as Sir Candleman, who I follow over on Instagram, who is a fragrance fan and uh, fragrance slash candle uh, influencer. Uh, also mentioned them in one of his videos and I thought, you know, I have a sort of long list of brands that I really want to explore as I'm expanding my horizons in Whiffing Wax and uh, they seem very interesting to me and so um, I wanted to check them out and I went to Nordstrom's uh, and saw that they were there. I was looking at some other brands that Nordstrom had as well and uh, from a few that I was looking at these, the scents that I smelled from PF Candle Company really were intriguing and I wanted to give them a shot and so as I've done in the past, so I'll show you first uh, what I purchased, give you just a little bit, you know, the, the two minute spiel uh, around really what, I, a little bit of research I've done um, on the brand to understand more what they're about and their practices and sort of their philosophy on scent and just sort of the actual product line and what they offer, their product mix. And then I'll do quick but in-depth as I tend to go on, uh, sniff reviews, including one post burn review of three of their scents in a th uh, three and a half ounce, bigger than a votive, but you know, like a small jar candle, three and a half ounces. Um, and this is their essentials pack uh, that has three different blends that I guess are some of their most popular scents. So PF Candle Company, um, so they're a Los Angeles based home fragrance company, still interestingly owned and operated, kind of family owned and operated uh, by Kristen Pumphrey and Thomas Newberger. Uh, Kristen started it back on Etsy in 2008, and they are proud to say that they are still independently owned. So they don't, they're not you know, owned by a large parent company with, with investors that they're trying to please. It is still independently owned and operated. And with that, they've grown to actually a team of 95 team members, which is I mean, that is a, it's considered, you know, small company, but 95 team members is significant, certainly for a home fragrance brand that started in, you know, in, in someone's home kind of, uh, and on Etsy. So that's quite impressive. Um, and all of their products are developed, produced, tested, packed, and shipped uh, from their team in Los Angeles. So they really are kind of a one-stop shop kind of mom and pop operation in that sense. Their entire collection is vegan and cruelty-free and phthalate-free always. Their candles are 100% domestically sourced soy wax. And their sort of primary values that they go after are design, DIY, environment, and community. Um, again, community they're building across fragrance fans and their uh, employees of 95 employees and three standalone stores. So they've got two in LA and one in San Francisco. The product mix is pretty solid, a, a wide variety. So they have candles, reed diffusers, room and linen sprays, incense, car fragrance, as well as hand and body wash and many of their core scents. Um, you can buy them, of course, on their website. Um, you can also find them at CB2, Madewell, Free People, Anthropology, Nordstrom, where I found them, Urban Outfitters, Marine Layer, and many boutiques. Their candles are, again, 100% domestically grown soy wax, cotton core wicks, and a blend of fine fragrance oils that they say consist of natural and man-made materials, so synthetic, but more sustainable, um, a better cost point, and uh, just really able to have better control. One thing that's interesting about them that they call out both um, throughout the site and in their FAQs is they want fragrance to enhance, not overpower. They're not one of those brands that says we have the highest level of fragrance oils in there. We're going to, you know, blow you out. We're going to have you so strong, which there are times that and I do, you know, I, I'm, I love, I'm a heavy burner. I love, a, and I've got a large open concept spaces. I'm burning it. I like stuff that's going to be intense, but I think it's also fine to have scents that as long as you can smell them, they're not, you know, the Yankee candle unscented. Um, it's fine to have something that is, is you know, it's in a powder room or it's in a smaller space or it's something that you get, you know, whiffs and wafts of. Occasionally, it's not something that is omnipresent and overpowering. I think that works, especially for thinking guest friendly or gift friendly. That's always something to, to be aware of. When it comes to their sizes, so this is a trio of 3.5 ounce, this small, uh, that currently it looks like they're not selling at this point. Um, but their standard is a 7.2 ounce single wick that is... $24 and burns for 40 to 50 hours. Then their large is 12.5 ounce, burns for 60 to 70 hours and is $34. And they have sort of a mid range for some of their scents in what they call a sunset collection, a different form factor. And that is 10 ounces, 50 to 60 hours at $29. Uh, the call it'll make on the 24 versus the 34, your standard 7.2 and your larger 12.5 ounces. That's kind of in a sweet spot of it's more than your mass market Bath and Body Works, though the retail on their 14.5 ounces 24 to 
usually get it on a pretty good discount if you're a smart shopper. Um, but so it's gonna be a little bit more than your Bath and Body Works, around maybe a little bit more than your Home Works if you're looking, you know, per ounce of wax. Um, but when you compare it to say like Boy Smells, it's sort of toward the range of Boy Smells, but not even as, as expensive as those. Boy Smells are gonna be 35 plus typically for around an eight ounce. Um, your Laugh Co's, your Nests are gonna be in the $45 range for the seven ounce pluses. So this really is kind of a sweet spot where 24 might be more than, than some people are used to spending on a single wick, you know, 7.2 ounce candle. Um, but when you're getting something that's a little bit more truly artisanal, can stand behind the cruelty-free sustainability, um, vegan, all of the, the really like community and environment-based focus that this brand has, I think that's where it starts to become worth it. And there really are some beautiful scents from the ones that I smelled at Nordstrom. So digging into the scents. So I've got three here. And there we are. Uh, so all of their jars, at least in their sort of classic scents, are in this kind of apothecary, amber, recycled glass, uh, with just a sort of gold lid there. It is a 100% soy wax, a pure white creamy wax there with good wick. And I will show you here right off the jump. The one I have burned so far was maybe two or three hours. Super, super clean burn as you'd typically expect with a soy uh, wax, you can see here it burning. A really even, good pool uh, with, you know, good flame and decent throw. I had this in my hallway bathroom, bigger than a powder room, but not, you know, a massive uh, spa bathroom by any means. Um, and it had a, a nice throw. I could smell it when I walked in there. It wasn't overpowering. It wasn't like, you know, burning some massive three wick, but even in this little three ounce, which is, you know, the smallest compared to their standard 7.2 or large 12.5, I was satisfied with the throw. So I'd be really um, comfortable, especially when you're thinking of, you know, powder rooms or bathrooms or small, you know, bedrooms or dens or things like that. I'd be comfortable buying, you know, the the, the standard or even the large to get that, that bigger throw in that space. Um, but they also say, hey, layer in either the room mists or the linen sprays or even incense, depending on what fragrances you're interested in to really layer the scents in different ways, which is, you know, I think most places, Nests and Homeworks and all of the, the, the brands, Lafco, they all have different uh, forms for you to really layer the scents. You can have it many different ways throughout your home. So as far as scents, so they have a core collection, their classic collection of 12 scents. Um, then they have what they call a sunset collection that has an additional four scents. And actually just added a new lavender to their classic collection. And in fact, when I was at Nordstrom, there was, I guess, a limited edition scent from last summer that was released called watermelon and a chile uh, and it was really interesting it really was like a fresh it was earthy but fresh uh, and it wasn't a jolly rancher watermelon it was actually a true authentic watermelon which is sweet but almost a little bit musty the way that a watermelon can get if that makes sense really interesting so i'm curious to see what kind of limited edition scents they bring out seasonally because i'm, a, I'm big on being a seasonal burner but their core collection uh, is, is fairly well-rounded as well, as far as fresh and fruity and earthy and aromatic and all that. So one thing I really like on their website is for each of their fragrances, they list both the family that it falls within. Is it fresh? Is it earthy? Is it aromatic? Is it woody? Is, you know, whatever. Um, as well as the throw, which is nice because they're not just saying, hey, everything is a wild thrower. You're going to have some that are moderate, some that are strong, some that are subtle. And so you really get a sense of what's the family, What's the throw, intended throw, gonna be with this, and what are the notes? So I think that's just really helpful when you're trying to buy, especially if you're buying blind, just based on descriptions or reviews like this, right? So teakwood and tobacco. Uh, this one, they say the one that started it all. Some call it the boyfriend scent. We call it the OG, leather, teak, and orange. It is in the fragrance family of woody, and it is a throw that is considered to be subtle. Uh, so, Leather, teak, and orange. I will say teak wood. Um, don't necessarily confuse this with like mahogany teak wood and leather or um, as far as, you know, like the Bath and Body Works scent. There's a lot of teak wood there, but that's very much just like the Abercrombie and Fitch mahogany teak wood. Uh, and I think the mahogany and just all the things and the lavenders that are in that have sort of influenced a lot of people's minds of what teak wood smells like. So kind of throw that away and think of teak wood as, as dark and leathery. So it is leathery is typically the scent that you get from teak wood and they say leather, teak, and orange. What they don't mention uh, in their notes, and that's the only bit of feedback is I would love to see a little bit more intense with the uh, blends. If Maybe this is literally just like two or three different oils put together, but it smells unique enough that I feel like there is more to it as far as the notes. And I'd love to hear more of the breakdown of top, middle, bottom notes, or if there are a couple more than just the two or three here, what are they? I'd love to know. Um, because Love Boutique and Orange, the name tobacco is in here, and it does definitely have that scent of tobacco that... Um, that is really, really nice in um, home fragrance or even in parfums. So it's like, 
what does tobacco smell like? Not cigarettes <laughs> and not smoke. Two big things. Tobacco in um, fragrance and like you know, where you're wanting to smell the tobacco. Typically it's going to be sweet, almost a little bit floral. It can pair well with spicy or vanilla or woody or aromatic notes, um, but really it is going to be spicy and warm. It's not going to be smoky or chemical. Fresh tobacco really is going to be su sweet, um, a little bit soft, kind of like your, you know, your sandalwoods or some of your musks, but just really, really nice. And this adds that warmth of it's it's vegetal, but it's like, it's dark. It's not, it's not green leaves, tobacco leaves. It is dried, but really almost like an herb, just really beautiful. And so that's very, uh, that's very present in this for me. And the teak, if you're talking leather, it's not a choke you out cowboy leather or like really, really overly intense. It's, but it's there. It's again, it is subtle, but significant. And the orange is just sort of a classic, maybe almost like a bergamot, not fully bitter orange, but not a fresh, juicy, you know, not a zingy zest and not a, you know, juicy, sour, sweet juice. It's more so just a traditional, straightforward kind of orange oil. And it just really freshens up. You know, they call this one woody, but it's not as heavy or smoky or woody as sometimes woody scents can be when we think of perfumes, especially. I just keep sniffing it because it's it's just a beautiful expression of teak and tobacco with the freshness of the orange. Really, honestly, the more I sniff it, the more impressed I am with that. I really, really, really enjoy that. When I compare it to say like the, the tobacco scent that I reviewed in Kringle Candle Company in the daylight, small containers, it was overwhelming. It had so many woods thrown in it. There's a bit of the tobacco, but it was just, it was round, but it was just heavy and cloying and it was just like incense and patchouli and, Cypress, so many things battling for it. This is so well balanced and this is just very thought, this is a thoughtful blend for me. Then we go to, I'll save my favorite for last. We'll go next to Golden Coast number 21. Uh, Golden Coast says, Big Sur magic, wild sage baking in the sun, the rumble of waves and rocks, notes of eucalyptus, sea salt, redwood, and Palo Santo wood. It is in the family aromatic and woody and the throw is considered strong. Oh boy, this is very nice. This is creamy. You, the eucalyptus is a soft powdered eucalyptus. Sea salt, I can get, it's very much that accord note where you are sort of driving down Pacific Coast Highway, but it is that kind of like Northern, it's not a hot, warm tropical ocean. It's a little bit wetter, a little bit cooler. On like a, you know, during the sunset. Redwood, again, you got a little bit of that Pacific Northwest in there. Redwood and Palo Santo are really nice woods for me. Again, they just lean up. The, certainly the Palo Santo can be a bit dry and almost towards like a sandalwood sort of scent used in, in many, you know, body perfumes and home fragrances. And simply has some of those higher value for people that are into the sort of crystals and smudging and things like that Palo Santo is often used burning for that uh, sort of effect. Uh, it's just, and the, again, the redwood to me, there was, the only time I've ever smelled redwood in a fragrance was, I believe Slack & Co actually did a test collection that was uh, Allegheny National Forest, uh, which I'll actually talk about in a future video. Um, back probably 10 years ago, it was released though, and there was a redwood scent in there. But redwood is, it's subtle, uh, mildly spicy, earthy, but a tinge of sweetness, kind of what you imagine a redwood to, to, to look like to me. There's a dry quality to it, but again, it brings a spice, a sweetness, earthiness, and just sort of a, a bit of a sophistication. To me, the thing that this reminded me a little bit of actually is a Slack & scent from back in the day. Fairly straightforward, sandalwood vanilla. Um, and I think some of the vanilla could be coming, that, that was like a creamy vanilla. And certainly the redwood, the Palo Santo, could, could lean toward bringing a bit of those, so almost like a tonka kind of notes in there. And the Palo Santo, again, could be leaning toward a bit of a sandalwood. But that eucalyptus is a bit of a fresh edge. It's a not an astringent spa, but more a soft, powdery uh, eucalyptus, but really, really nice. That's I can see why this one is the aromatic and woody family because the eucalyptus adds another, again, just like a, almost a sea spray, a Pacific Northwest non-tropical <laughs> sea spray, if you will. So that's really, really nice. I'm uh, excited to burn that one. And my favorite one, which is why I burned it first, this is number 11, Amber and Moss. 
The notes on this one, it says, a weekend in the mountains, sun gleaming through the canopy, sage, moss, and lavender. The fragrance family is fresh and earthy, and the throw is considered moderate. I mean, moss, sage, uh, lavender, amber, you're, I mean, you're, you're, the amber, sometimes I don't love, but the other, the other notes in the botanicals, I'm all for. Oh boy, this is beautiful. Don't let the name amber throw you. This is a, like an ambergris that brings a little bit of like that resinous depth, that sort of exotic quality to it, but it is, it is not the major player in here in a way that amber can be a base note that overwhelms or is just like, oh, forget it. If there's amber in, you know, this perfume, it's all you smell, not at all. It's there just to add a, a little something alluring. And the sage, I mean, moss and sage can sometimes be interchangeable. It's, it's a little bit earthy, not terribly so. It's, it's more fresh almost than earthy. The lavender is a soft, sweet lavender. The sage is honestly sort of a soft, slightly earthy, slightly green, um, but not overly savory sage. It's more kind of herbaceous. And moss. Again, moss is going to bring sort of that wet forest floor. Um, as they say, a weekend in the mountains, gleaming through the canopy. You, the canopy of trees are over you. You're taking, you know, a walk through the forest in the mountains. So you're getting some of those, you know, more delicate things like your sage and lavender and the, and the moss on growing the trees and the rocks. Balanced with a little bit of depth, not quite woodsy, but earthy from uh, that amber. It's just beautiful, and it almost, it, it feels, this it's like the sweetest of all of them, it's the coolest of all of them, and I almost get to the tiniest hint of like, I want to say that there's probably some sort of a little bit of juniper or a little bit of fir balsam or some pine in here because it just is the tiniest hint of almost a holiday without being a holiday candle, and I think that's because there's some sort of Again, a little bit of an astringency or depth from uh, the muskiness of some sort of pine, whether it's a pine bush or a pine tree or, or whatever, I'm not sure. But there's something in there that just adds another layer that really plays well with the lavender, especially in here. Just beautiful and had, again, really nice, subtle, but significant throw. This is one that I, I probably will purchase in a larger size because I really, really enjoy this and uh, want to burn through it. So again, I'd love to hear your experiences with PF Candle Co. If you have any, if you've had any or smelled them, what you think of them, check out the website. I, again, based on the first burn that I had and just the couple of sniffs that I've had here and the bit of research I've done on their website that anyone can do on their own, I'm impressed and I'm kind of excited to see what else they have. Again, not the largest collection with just sort of their, you know, 12 to 20 cents, um, but they really do seem to have their classics in here for a reason um, and excited to see what else they can bring uh, as they start to bring out other potential season or limited edition scents along the way. So that is the review and introduction for PF Canico. Thanks for sticking around with me and until next time, take care.